Good evening, my friends. I'm Dr. Firuza Parekh. I'm the director of IVF at the Fertility Just Look International Fertility Center. Today, I'm going to shed some light on a condition which affects 8 to 10 percent of women in the reproductive age group. This is called polycystic ovary syndrome, PCOS. Polycystic ovary syndrome was initially called the Steen Leventhal syndrome after the two surgeons who gave it this name. It is also called the disease of the bearded lady simply because there were some women who were hirsute and produced a lot of hair on their face. Earlier it was called PCOD, polycystic ovarian disease, but this is a very old name and now according to many criteria set up by different societies such as the Rotterdam criteria which was introduced by the ASRM, the American Society for Reproductive Medicine and the NIH criteria, the criteria laid down by the National Institute of Health as well as the recent criteria of the Androgen Excess Society. Because there is a higher amount of estrogen and because there is a hormone imbalance, it is considered that such women are at a slightly higher risk of cancer of the uterus. So regular checks of the uterus, regular mammographies are also important because of the anovulatory condition, such women may be at a slightly higher risk of breast cancer and uterine cancer. PCOS is a multi-organ disease and therefore the treatment will vary depend on what the woman wants. However, it's very important to catch PCOS in young girls at a very young age. Sometimes because of the lifestyle that we have introduced into our environment where children no longer go and play in gardens, they are stuck to their computers, they enjoy fast food, food which has a high glycemic index. This is the exact environment that brews PCOS. So it is very important for parents to encourage exercise, yoga, good eating habits, good sleeping habits in children especially in girls. PCOS can also run in families. So if one child has PCOS, it is possible that there could be what is called a metabolic syndrome in her brother or a metabolic syndrome in her sister. So the most important treatment is prophylaxis. Healthy food, healthy mind, enough exercise, good sleep. This can prevent obesity. This can prevent a lot of problems that crop up with PCOS which can sometimes lead to infertility, obesity and all the other morbid conditions that I talked about earlier. If a young girl approaches me for her problem of hirsutism or extra hair then there are particular tablets that can be used, hormonal tablets to correct the hormone imbal imbalance and some of the commonest ways to treat, is, treat this is with birth control pills. There are many other tablets with a specific or what are antagonists to the production of hair which can also be used. Young women who have this recurrent problem of having extra hair, the best solution is to do either waxing or laser because in the long run this will help a lot. For a woman who is planning to have a baby and couples who come to us with anovulatory infertility because of PCOS. Again, the most important factor is lifestyle. Today we live in the fast age where there is fast food, there is fast of everything. We need results, we want results quickly and that is where we need to hold back, look at the direction in which we are going, cut down the pace of our life, look at meditation, yoga, enough sleep that itself will break this vicious circle where excess of fat will cause excess of hair, excess of all the other things that I told you about and will prevent a woman from ovulating. If one has a healthy eating habit, there is still 
a proportion of women who will not respond to this and who may require what is called insulin sensitizing agents such as metformin. Many women will respond to metformin, it will bring down the weight, it will help them to ovulate, it will bring down what is called insulin resistance and in the long run it will also cut down the risk of diabetes. For women who don't ovulate, please see a reproductive specialist or reproductive endocrinologist because you might need tablets such as clomiphene or letrozole. You might need to go on a little higher by going on to use hormonal injections. Some doctors may prefer to do laparoscopy and do what is known as LEOS, laparoscopic electrocauterization of the ovarian surface. In this, a cautery point is used to burst all these extra follicles. With the help of this, the level of male hormones come down and therefore a woman may ovulate spontaneously and therefore can get pregnant spontaneously. There are some women who may not respond to all these forms of treatment and for them IVF or to start with IUI and then progressing to IVF may become an option. Women who have a very what we call a very tight polycystic ovary syndrome may not ovulate at all. In fact, the eggs that may be obtained in such women may not be healthy, may not produce good embryos. So before one embarks on IVF, it is very important to correct all the factors which will then help us to get better quality eggs. So I would like to give a take home message for all women in different age groups who are struggling with the condition called metabolic syndrome. One of the causes of metabolic syndrome being polycystic ovaries or polycystic ovarian syndrome. My take home message is lead a healthy lifestyle, cut down on sugars, cut down on foods that have a high glycemic index, respect your body. Make sure that you sleep well, you eat well, you eat healthy. Make sure you expose your body to sunlight so that you have enough vitamin D reserves in your body. You may have to take a supply or supplement of vitamin D. These are some small tips which will help you to bring down your risk of polycystic ovaries and in fact bring down all the risks that are associated with polycystic ovaries.